So, hey, everybody, we're going to talk about um, now I'm going to like delay, like, like uh, not delay, but um, Sharon uh, did some more digging than I did. And this case is like not shocking because Diddy, you know, has always been a bad person. We we kind of figured that out. Well, I'm going to just say this personally. I figured that Diddy was a bad person since B. Smalls died. So it was rumored that he was the reason that he caused Biggie to um, get assassinated. So like ever since then, we were like, yo, uh, Biggie is not a good person. I mean, sorry, uh, Diddy is not a good person. He was he was known as Puffy back then. He has so many different names. Okay, take the whole Sharon. Okay. Ever since then, he has been like a, a bad person. And so we've been keeping in, um, I've been like, not really been much of a, a supporter of his. So we're going to uh, go over this. The The indictment uh, has been released. It's been unsealed today. So we're going to go over it. Sharon, feel free to interject in anything I'm saying. Um, if I got, uh, so far I read the indictment and after a while I started to get a little redundant, so I stopped. But um, if I say anything that I miss, feel free to uh, interject whatsoever. You guys can always, you know, um, interject whenever you feel like it. It's like an open space where we get to talk. So as you all know, um, Sean, Diddy, Puffy, Cone, whatever his, he goes by so many names. And in in the indictment, they put all of his aliases in, in the indictment. So we're going to call him Diddy. Okay. The Diddler. All right. And so he was arrested yesterday, but he was supposed to be arrested today. I did not know that. He was arrested yesterday at his hotel. He was supposed to be arrested today. For some reason, Diddy did something that kind of like put the um the law enforcement or the feds, you know, on e they made them uneasy. Now I know I saw several video clips of him walking around in New York taking pictures, shaking hands, you know, like he was running for office or something. And so it was like shocking to realize like, okay, wait a minute, I'm seeing all these video clips of him out on the street. And then boom, he got arrested yesterday. Now the indictment was released today by the Southern District uh, of New York. And there are more charges coming and the case is still ongoing. Although he's still in jail, um, he hasn't been arraigned or I don't even know if they're going to give him bail. I don't know. This is just me guessing. I'm not sure, but I know for, for a fact, more charges are coming. This is an ongoing case. Okay. So don't think that the charges so far, um, are going to be only charges, but so far he has been charged with racketeering and sex trafficking. So far, these crimes are being investigated from the year 2009 to 2024. They have frozen most of his, not, well, most of his assets, not all of it, okay? But they're putting uh, on hold all of his companies, including his shell companies, properties, cars, and, and or anything associated with Diddy, including his businesses that he owned with family, and that includes his son. This reminds me of the same thing that's been going on with the Tates. So it's like when the Tates used their uh, uh, friends to purchase cars, they thought that they were going to be able to shield them uh, from being confiscated. And that was not the case. I think that's the reason why Tristan was so pissed when he came out of the courtroom and started lying. Anyway, we can talk about that later. He used abuse, threatened, coerced, and essayed women around him to fulfill various desires and activities. He and the members of his group, along with the associates of his business empire, engaged in sex trafficking forced labor, kidnapping, running an estate prostitution ring, drug trafficking, and distribution of drugs, arson. And that's been several cases. He got several cases of arson on his hands on that one too. That was shocking. Bribery and obstruction to justice. And more charges are coming soon. But those, what I just listed are not current charges. Those are charges he's being investigated for, which are going to be possible charges in the future. In addition to the 10 witnesses who will testify against Diddy, all of his audio recording and video footage will be used against him. Diddy, Diddy would also share these videos of his victims in order to humiliate, intimidate, blackmail, 
or to obtain favors. Let me explain what I just read because I was taking notes as I was reading this. So Diddy had this. Okay, so I'm starting to see the difference between um, a lot of these men who who want to be pre- uh, who want to be um, predators towards women. They can't shut up. They they do things that will reveal themselves. Like okay, well with the tapes, they kept making videos talking about what they did. It was like mask off about all the things that they would do to women, how they would coerce women, how they would uh, how they would uh, physically torture women. You know, all these things they would just like mask off. And even I, and I talked about this on my stream yesterday. When we were going over the Sneeko and Andrew Tate beef, Andrew sat up there and playing f- and, and right there looked in the camera and said, yeah, well, they wouldn't allow my N-word hard R uh, ass into, um, into Romania to, to human traffic. He literally admitted to human trafficking on video two days ago when he was going back and forth with Sneeko. And um, anyway, so with with the Tates, they keep tweeting about their crimes. They keep bragging about their crimes on video. They do interviews explaining their crimes. They have a text messages and as well as a website about their crimes. With Diddy, Diddy is different. Diddy records everything, even when he's threatening, bribing, or coercing a witness or a victim to not snitch, he records that. So he records himself not only committing crimes, but he also, um, and that's what the obstruction of justice come from, because he records himself threatening, bribing, all these, to, to do anything to persuade a witness or one of his staff members or anyone who he's, is a victim to not, go to the police, to not go to the paparazzi, to not, uh, to not just tell. And I thought this was like, I, I would like to talk about this later. Like, is it the narcissism or w- what is it that will make these people? I, th- I think if you are committing these type of crimes that you would not do anything that could basically you do something like record yourself that will be used against you. So when they raided <clears throat> his home, uh, in in Florida in in California, they all of these recordings were there, audio recordings and video recordings of all of his criminal deeds, the freak offs, the parties, the 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 R word, the, the R wording of the women. That I'm gonna just say SAs, the SA of the women. All of this was he just he's he's done. He he's just gonna spend the rest of his life in jail. There's no way he's gonna get out of this. Did he not only abuse a host of women? Who worked under him, um, uh, uh, under him, with him, associated with him, but he also abused his staff who witnessed his abuse. All friends, family members, and staff who helped Diddy carry out his demonic crimes will also be charged in the future. So, this is another thing that he's going to be done for because a lot of these people who have watched and said nothing or helped them or helped get these women, help uh, drug the drinks. Um, they will be charged as well, and they probably will be given a plea bargain, or the charges may be um, dropped if they testify as a witness. So even though right now you have 10 witnesses, with many of them being victims, you're also going to have some uh, of these people who worked with Diddy in in orchestrating these crimes are going to also end up being witnesses in order to avoid jail time. Diddy uh, also had foreign businesses. So there's that that's being uh, investigated and uh, and the cooperation of those countries where those businesses are, are being in, are, are um, cooperating. So it's possible that he's going to get mon- money laundering charges uh, included in the upcoming charges uh, coming his way. Diddy carried out uh, these various crimes through violence, use of firearms, uh, threats, coercion, verbal, emotional, physical, and um, sexual abuse. Diddy would also carry out acts of intimidation, manipulation, bribery, and threats of retaliation against anyone who threatened to snitch on him 
or who could snitch. And like I said, not only were there witnesses to this, but he he himself will record himself doing this. Um, the biggest thing that disgusted me with the whole thing was the freak off, these parties that he called freak offs. Um, those of us who have watched uh, um, the interview, um, I, I forgot the comedian, I forget his name at the moment, but uh, he was basically talking about these freak offs. But anyway, D Diddy's friends and staff would conduct. Was a it Cat Williams? Cat Williams. Thank you. Yes, Cat Williams. Cat Williams was just like, yeah, these. You gotta. You can, did he always want to do a party? You gotta tell him no. And these are these kind of freak off. These parties were freak offs. This is what he called them freak offs, where he would get women, um, but pay male escorts, and then he'll get his friends, he'll get his staffs, he'll even get his sons out to just get random women. Okay. Uh, um, from clubs or from his uh, studio or any woman looking for a record deal. Um, and once they got to the um, uh, mansion, uh, if they were not down, they were either drugged, intimidated, threatened with, uh, and um, they were either physically uh, harmed, like physically forced and to lure these women into these private affairs, which is known as the freak offs to participate in to participate in sex with male escorts. And the freak offs were solely used for Diddy's pleasure because he would be, while these things, while the quote unquote freak offs will go on, he would be in the shadows or in the corners, or maybe even just watching via the recording device of what was going down. Okay. But I want you all to know that all of every last one of Diddy's freaks, quote unquote, freak offs were recorded, all of them. OK, and the law enforcement officers, the feds have uh, have these recordings. Um, they were uh, the, um, now these freak offs occurred regularly and they will last for days. And the victims were given drugs by the by his staff to keep them compliant along with giving them IV fluids to recover from the physical exhaustion. So this is when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of reading this. Like, like this guy, like in my opinion, I don't know even why he's alive. Um, but anyway, uh, so during the month of, uh, during the month of uh, March of this year, when he was raided, law enforcement seized a variety of narcotics and 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lube. I'm going to say that again. 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lube. They also seized weapons, which includes three AR-15s, and all of the serials, serial numbers were scratched off of those uh, weapons. So uh, he, he has also a lot of... Um, Victims who have testified in reference to and women who are saying they had to make a record deal, then those women have to carry out cer certain sexual favors and also be used. And a lot of times what was promised to them was never um, given. And uh, he, once again, like I said, recorded everything. So this is going to be a slam dunk, dunk case. And because of um, when he was being sued by Cassie, that's the woman uh, that he was abusing and R wording SA in for so many years. Um, they, the company, she went after the company uh, instead of Diddy himself, because he is uh, on the board and he is a uh, um, a big figure in these companies. So the companies itself with the board members, which just go ahead and settle because they don't want the headache. Um, what I'm seeing is that, uh, that the government is going to end up seizing any and everything connected with uh, Sean Puffy Combs, that there's no inheritance for his family. Like they're going to be broke. Um, so, and I don't care. Okay. Because uh, his sons are just as worse as their father and something needs to be, you know, the government needs to keep their eye on them too. Cause the, the, the fruit does not fall far from the tree. So uh, what I want to say is, and then I'm going to let you all um, jump in and Sharon, you can also uh, chime in. Um, one thing about this story that, uh, that really baffled me is that um, men, of course, these type of men thinking that they're untouchable, 
I guess my question is, is that why the government were keeping their eye on Diddy since 2009, okay, maybe even before then. Why allow so many people? It, it, I just want to say, I just want to say, ninety percent of the victims are women, uh, but there are uh, a percentage, maybe eight percent, maybe nine, are men. My question is, why allow this to go so long, so far, with him just destroying people's lives? I believe Kim would be alive if if if, if Diddy was stopped beforehand. I do believe. He took her out. I really do. Um, and and I also have think he has everything, something to do with um, um, Big Papa um, being killed. This man thought he was untouchable because nothing was done to him for so long. Well, well, almost three decades, nothing was done to him. And I want to know, like, what do you guys think? Like, uh, and sure, you can also add something in that I missed. I'm sure I did. Uh, Cause once I read the freak off part, part of the, um, the freak off party that was in the indictment, I, I was just started just glazing over everything else. Why do you think the government allowed this to carry on for so long, thus collecting more victims in the process? That's the unfortunate part when dealing, especially for criminal. I, I work on administrative law. Mine's a little easier because this is statures and rules. So like I go in and I regulate businesses. So I come in, I regulate your licenses and technically I can take your business license away. I'm one of those mean ones, um, but it's specific rules and regulations. So mine's a little easier, even though I have to document significantly everything I do. I mean, I have a pack of paperwork and I have to document it. However, if I move to the criminal element, that takes a whole nother realm and that can take us years. And then depending on the size and the scope of that, then you're going on years, which means sometimes that criminal enterprise may be going on for years while we continue to collect. So we might have back data, but then we are now going to have to do current, which now we're going to have to do video. We're going to have to get the evidence. We're going to have to do all these different things that come into play. Besides, now we're going to have to track the information. Now, if we're tracking money, depending on what kind of money, where is it going? Where is this? Where is that? That takes additional you know, time and years and dedication and people and resources. And that's what a lot of people have a hard time understanding. And a lot of times, especially criminal enterprises like this, now you're talking about multiple different victims and it spans on for years. Now, somebody like P. Diddy, right? He went on for decades with zero repercussions, which emboldens, embold, if you haven't noticed, small most criminals start out very small, petty crime. Then it moves on and they get bigger and bolder and more. And that's what happens because you don't get caught. So you, that's, you get bigger and bolder and your crime gets bigger and bigger. That's essentially what happened with P. Diddy. He thought he was above the law. He would never get caught. And that's the majority of most criminal enterprises. And that's what happens. It's no different than Tate. He thought he would never get caught. He got bolder. He got mouthier. He kept going. And the majority of his fans think he has, he's above the law because he has never been held accountable. Same thing with Epstein. He got too big for his bridges and he may have been an asset. I'm not gonna deny that one. He very well could have been, but there's a point where you're no longer, you're more of a liability than you are an asset of collecting information. And you have to keep that balance. And when you no longer, you're too much of a liability, then guess what happens? And then if you mouth off too much, then, then you're gonna get killed. And that's essentially what happens to a lot of people. And then now you're seeing the, the, the tumbling falling of what happens. And all these people have dirt on a lot of major players. And then depending on that dirt, depending on who's going to come out, they're going to follow that trail. And depending on where the trail goes and where it needs to go. So you have Weinstein, you have P. Diddy. P. Diddy, it is connected to a humongous musical moguls, right? With lots and lots of outlets. So depending on where that needs to go and where they need to find the outlet. And it's the same thing with the Tates. Who leaders, who was behind him? What mob bosses were behind him? Especially when it comes to the casinos. Who else is behind them? So, you know, who else do we need to take down and what networks? So all of that has to be tracked and followed. And it's noted, and it's all, I hate to say it, it's a lot of paperwork and a lot of people. It takes a lot of time and effort and years. I know my job, I do one case, it could take me four months and I'm doing little businesses. So you, you add that to multiple, multiple businesses. How many businesses does Comb have? He probably has 20 and they're at least, I know, 
the United States wise, some of them are international. So now you're going through international, then you have to deal with international laws. So you have all of those things, and then on top of it, you got trafficking, you got money, you got this. So all of that spans, and all of that takes years. And unfortunately, you stack up more and more victims. And that's essentially what's going on. But the engagement of, of what he was doing, which is commercial sex acts, which is racketeering, he has so many things on here. He's going to end up, you know, there, there was fraud, coercion, sex acts. It was all right there. It was essentially as all, if anybody wants to, it's, it's no different than mobs. That's essentially what he was doing here. He was doing mob-based violence and running it the same way through his music business and then trying to push that money all through the music businesses and through his normal businesses and then cleaning the money. That's what I see. A lot of this is what he's doing and he got charged with the racketeering, which is the same kind of stuff, which is engaged in prostitution and then blackmailing everybody. Um, what was what was that you was posting in uh, in the chat there, uh, thoughts? I'm, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, um, there was like some other, like, you know how uh, when you listen to like Kat talk about these different celebrities and stuff, right? Like he brings up some other parts of it which is not it's not just p diddy you know abusing adults or women in his circle who also like groom young up-and-coming entertainers right like wasn't there like an usher thing or and you know what i mean like just having these like justin bieber and justin bieber was the one that i posted because that's the one i heard like the most about and like maybe what the men don't realize that they're doing right like an andrew tate is guilty of it as well is the the constant parading around naked as a man and and andrew tate specifically wearing literally only his boxing shorts like 24 7 like he's some kind of autistic that can't you know take cloth against his skin for more than an hour at a time um but it is a form of desensitization and grooming and that's why you shouldn't have minors just milling about you when you're in various stages of undress. You know what I mean? Like, even if the girls are in a bunch of bikinis and stuff like that, it's still technically not appropriate, right? And I don't understand why being in the entertainment industry always seems to make it okay for this kind of grooming behavior just because the performer is a minor. There should be more protection, in my opinion, right? Right, right. Rafim, you have anything you want to add in, into this? Sorry, can I? Can you guys hear me? I think, yeah, yeah. I just think he's just—he just thought he would get away with it forever. Just, I'm so happy that he's finally being held accountable. It makes me so happy. But hearing about all this stuff, it's horrific that it's been going on mm. this long, and he really thought he would get away with it for life. Yeah, the timing though is very suspicious, especially when you guys both say that you know. Just the FBI say the line. We've had our eye on him oh, for no, a to, long yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I know it's like, dude. But they I, don't pull the trigger until someone files a civil suit, like Cassie, and yeah. then they're like, "Oh, it I looks guess like we Cassie should." Cassie was yeah. the reason why this all was able to go down now. Well, right, and and just like in triggers. Romania, it was until one woman reached out mm-hmm. to outside Romania's circle to get help, like her parents or that other guy, mm-hmm. that things actually get done. Yeah. And usually the civil suit, though, what it does is it triggers and it, 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 it allows like information to flow into the judicial system and then it causes discovery and it allows information that the criminal side wasn't allowed to get at the time because either the grand jury or something was not allowed to be subpoenaed and allow you to have access to it. However, if in the civil court, then the judge said no during discovery allowed you to get access to that. Then once that's allowed, now now it's available for the criminal. So now the FBI now has access to that information that they've been waiting for to now file the criminal charges. Now they have access to it. And that's usually why a lot of the times it comes after a criminal charge or a civil charge. So like they kind of wait after the fact. It's no different than right now. Like if the Tate's Tate case, they're waiting, like our for especially for money laundering or tax evasion, they're waiting for the Romanian case. And they wait for a lot of the stuff to come and they wait for it to get public, essentially transparency, right? They'll grab all that information. And then you'll have what it's no different than me. I'm the I I and T crosser, right? And then we dive into the information. Then they file their cases. Um, we're that we're we're the annoying women that Tate hate, by the way, because we're the ones that are going behind the scenes and digging through all the information and diving into it. This is the administrative people behind the scenes. That's who we are right here. For the annoying women 
who usually are the ones who end up putting like the mob bosses behind boss because we got you in, you know, tax law. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's okay. what, we're the okay. administrative people that everybody hates. <laughs> I love <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so, so, if we can't get you on this one, then we'll get you on this little law over here that is obscure little laws that people hate. But that's essentially what, but you know what I mean? And that's what a lot of states have it and this and that. But a lot of times that, that's what we end up getting a lot of people hooked on, you know, and it's annoying and some people hate it. But at the same time, for victims, it, at least the guys put away. And that's how we look at it as. So it's a win. And that's a lot of stuff that we have to go digging through a lot of paperwork. And it takes a lot of time, but it is what it is. Am I, um, like I said earlier, and I asked this earlier, because it's still stuck on my mind. And of course, I I know I don't think like a criminal. I'm not a narcissist. Um, like being from the police force, obviously, you know, uh, it's like I see people commit these crimes. I'm like, why did you do this knowing like you're recording yourself or you're writing the, that, that down and everything like that? Help me understand and maybe this is a narcissistic trait. And if that is, I'll go ahead and put that underneath that umbrella. But what makes someone just, okay, like I said, with the Tates, they just blatantly just said, I did this crime, this crime, this crime, this crime. And if I get locked, locked up, I'm going to tell my lawyer to go pay them off because the politicians are crooked, the judge are crooked. I can have everything I want. Romania is the most corrupt country in the EU and I can have what I want and I don't like, you know, like he was just basically saying, I'm in a country where I can break laws and I can brag about it and nothing's going to get done to me. And then now he's crying about, look at what they're doing and just the, the line. I, like I said, I'm, I don't, we'll get on them later, but like with Diddy though, he didn't brag. He maybe he bragged about all the money he made, but he never bragged about any of this. He recorded everything. He recorded his crimes against uh, the victims. He recorded himself bribing, uh, threatening, uh, coercing, like like just just he everything he did. He had to record himself doing it. What kind of low IQ? mentality is this and you have no hold on not only recording everything audio like like uh having the wiretaps on all the phones and recording his phone calls all of them when it comes to stuff like this and then having cameras all over this mansion uh all over certain type of events like if you have different types of parties where it's a white party um and when i say white party this is a party where everybody dress up in white you know he have he also has his crews install cameras there. Does anybody know why, if you are going to commit this type of crime, even if you believe you're untouchable, why record everything? Blackmail. That's it. Well, some of it was used his for was, blackmail, right? His was, his was 100% so he can utilize the information and use it to control people into blackmail. That was Diddy's thing. Oh, okay. That's it. He didn't think that that would be able to, the, all of those tapes would ever get out um, besides using it for his own resources to blackmail people. He never wanted to, um, I, I, like, since he never, like, talked about it, never, like, he was never Andrew Tate, you know, thinking that he could be a character. Like, he's only doing a character thing on, that, that was Andrew Tate thing. You know, he would always say, "I'm this is only a character on the outside. I'm really not like this way, you know, in person, right? That was Tate's entire ordeal, uh, where really that's exactly who he was, but worse. And then, but Diddy was his public persona was, I'm the super nice guy. I give to charity. I do this, I do that. But really who he was in person was this freaking nightmare of a person um, who also then blackmailed people with all the video sex tapes that he was creating on them. Right. And then besides, you know, getting them people to do, you know, you know, gay sex acts and then blackmailing them with it. So that's the stuff that he would do. So, that's why he would do it. And then he'd think he would never get caught. It's no different than Epstein would do the same thing, which is how he is thriving in his business so that he would use underage girls and then videotape the powerful people. And then that's how he got his positions. And that's how he ended up becoming the multimillionaire or billionaire, whatever he was for so long. And he was able to hold that position. And then he was able to sell some of those videos, right? 
which is how he probably ended up. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, he was able to trade and sell right. those videos. Exactly, which is how he ended up be, be moving up in the power position, as I call it, a power position. And that's why I said he he could be an asset. I'm not going to say he is or not, but somewhere down the line, he became a higher liability than he became that, which is how you end up you know, on the other side of the justice system because you end up racking up too many you know, victims, which essentially is what happened with a lot of these guys. You know, it's one thing, mm. and, and I'm not going to say a lot of good businesses start out as a criminal element. I mean, right. you can, I, I live in my, I, I'll let everybody, everybody can tell I live in Florida, so I live in Miami. There was plenty of businesses that started out as a criminal, but then they flip it around and now they have thriving restaurants, they have thriving closing businesses, they have thriving commercial businesses, they have all kinds of stuff, but they may have started out but then they flip it around and become an honest business. I'm not one to say yay or nay. I'm not going to go there. But at the same time, though, they eventually go legit. These guys do. they ever really do. go legit? It seems Some like do. when you... Okay. Some do. I'm not saying all. Some do. I'm not saying it's a 90 percenter. I maybe yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it, it seems like me, like once you start evil, you don't know what good is. Yeah, right. that's my mentality. Yeah. Is. But most of them that end up, some of them do, and they yeah. flip, and they 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 finally learn their light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing, and they end up they they do, not a lot. Mm, okay, Haley, what do you think? Oh, I just think it's funny how much these guys love to, they love, now he's going to have so much street cred. <laughs> so it, it really works the opposite where supposedly we want to discourage this kind of thing, but now people are just going to be even more impressed. And the people who were impressed before this now triples it, it now doubles down on um, the greatness of all of this crime and, and all the access and, and yeah, who benefits, who benefits from letting this run? That's like Epstein. Who benefits? And then somebody had mentioned um, Bieber, Justin Bieber. And it does make me wonder if everything is recorded, then there will be evidence of whatever happened with Justin Bieber, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's messed up because Justin was fine. I blame his mom, of course. Okay, It's her fault the way things have turned out. You should have never let your son just... Be, let your son loose to these grown men, you know what I'm saying? But um, he hasn't been the same uh, as he gotten older. And it's like, you know, now he's, you know, heavily into drugs. And you can tell that uh, he has a lot of demons inside of him. And where there was a video uh, tape, I'm sorry, video clip showing how when uh, Justin and, and Diddy were together, uh, he was like, yeah, you don't call me no more. I don't see you no more. And Justin was so nervous. He was still young at the time. He was stuttering. He was like, well, you know, I got the tours and I got this. And, and, and the way Diddy was talking to him, it was like an old boyfriend or a, a lover or something like, like, yeah, you don't call me no more. When, when, when are we going to go out? Well, like you just stop hanging around, calling me. If I find that clip, I will uh, attach it to, uh, the thread, but yeah, Justin, uh, Justin was one of the obvious ones. Uh, now Usher, I already knew about that. I can, Usher, Usher is messed up for so many reasons and Diddy is one of them. Um, but also, um, when I see that clip of Justin, it was like, I kind of figured with the fact that his mother just let him just go on about these other adults without her supervision he was he's a cute little kid he was gullible naive you know it was just obvious that other predators including diddy was going to get their hands on him and if those tapes well here's a question i don't the 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 tape where diddy uh brutally beat up cassie in the hallway in that hotel yeah that was released by the, the feds because that was one of the videos that uh puffy that uh sean p diddy had in his collection and what happened was he would rent out the entire floor whenever uh sean would uh diddy would go to a hotel he would rent out the entire floor the entire floor was his okay and uh if something happened he would bribe the manager or the staff and the staff to not say anything. And they, he would insist on the master copy 
of any audio, I mean, audio or, vid or, or video footage that was recorded on that floor or even in the lobby of that time. Because, you know, when he beat up Cassie that bad and she had to go to the hospital, you know, she would cover up her head with a scarf, scarf and have the shades on. And he wanted that video footage too. So he would get it and keep it. And then the feds will release it. I don't think, I hope they're not that crazy to release anything that could be potentially embarrassing or that's definitely criminal that Sean did to not only uh, Justin Bieber and Usher, but to other women. Listen, everybody, P. Diddy, you know, he's a rich guy. He doesn't need to do any of these things, right? Like, so he's automatically innocent. I'm just saying, right? Like he's he could he could literally yeah. buy and sell people. We were like talking he's, about he's... that, right? Where people was thinking like, <laughs> oh, but they say that about Tate, don't they? Okay. Listen. They said they said it about Tate. They said, why would Tate need to sexually assault a woman? Why would he need to rape a woman? Because he's attractive. He can get any. And I'm like, these clowns, either they're playing stupid or they are sincerely believing that rape is just about sexual pleasure. Oh, only poor people need to reap tree. Like that's just the way it is, right? Okay. <laughs> these clowns. Well, you just imagine these that these rich people can buy and sell people, right? Or they can pay them off. Or, you know, all women are gold diggers kind of thing, right? So I mean Yeah, but I don't care if she is a gold digger, she doesn't deserve to be raped. You know, and and but th these women are not gold diggers. They're unfortunately some of them are looking to advance their careers. Some of them lo are looking. Um, let me see with with uh, just looking to make money, you know, and unfortunately, they they don't have the self-esteem. They don't have the confidence and and they don't understand the guidance. And this is the reason why these men type like to pr prey on young women, you know, when when. Uh, I forgot what age Cassie was, but she was very young when um, when Diddy went after her. And this is what I'm trying to get. And this is why I'm hard on the women in, in my community that are young. I'm like, you are the prime target. You are the soft target. You have very limited life experience. You don't understand the game that's being played. You you right now, you're looking for validation. So a lot of these men, a lot of these predators will tell you what you need to hear, what they, what you, what they want to hear. They study what motivates you. They study what you're scared of. They listen to you talk so much about yourself because you are very open. You like to disclose so much about your life, your fears, your, your ambition, your, your goals. You don't leave anything private. You just ex you just expose everything. And now they have a textbook on how they <clears throat> on how they get, can manipulate you. How which they what, can. It was like they ask you those questions too. And we we are open, right? We want to have a discussion, especially with an older man, thinking that they're interested in us. So right. they ask you those questions. You know, what do you like? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What are your this? What are that? And that right. opens the window for you to continue that. It, it, and what they're doing is that they're gauging you on what on where your what, what drives you, what motivates you, right? So like, if you're career driven, then they know. Okay, I'm going to have to go with that that angle. Okay, now I'm going to have to push her this way. How am I going to drive her this way? How am I going to? So like mm -hmm. all of that, when you're mm -hmm. dealing with someone like that, who is highly motivated to get you, especially if you are a good girl, quote unquote, right? Because that's me, right? Quote unquote, good girl, right? Right. Who's highly motivated by her career. How do you drive me in the direction you want me to go? Right. So how do you get me to do something I'm not going to want to do? Well, mine is career motivated. I'm a career motivated chick. So like, how do you get me to do something? So I have to go this way. How do you direct her to do that? How do you do this? How do you do that? Which is no different than a lot of these girls. Right. So then you get them to come in. You got to go to a party. Then you say, well, this is here. That I'm going to get you to get a contract. Just come to this, come to this party with me. Come. Right. There's going to be a lot of music producers. Okay, you go there. Hey, you know, you should really, you should change your dress. You should look more like this because you're going to get seen more. You're going to get better pictures. You're going to get better view. So then you change your dress because, you know, they know better. They know more than you do because you're new to this. You don't know anything better. 
So then you change. So like they, they push your boundary a little more each time. And then each time you go, you're going to get a little bit more exposed. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And that's exactly what they do over and over and over again to the point where they push you. Now you're having sex. Now you're doing this and now you're doing that. Right. And this is the same formula over and over and over again. And it can happen. It, it doesn't matter your education level to almost it, until you get exposed, until you understand the game, until you hear it. And a lot of times until it happens to you and that you wake up and you realize what's going on, you don't see it. And a majority of us, like me, like so many of us, we're not exposed to this. I don't know about you, but I lived an extremely sheltered life. Like my parents, my dad, everybody protected the crap out of me. So I was never exposed to a lot of the stuff that I got exposed to at a much later life, much later time. And it happened at a later time and I got exposed to a lot of craziness. So like there's a lot of things that people need to understand and a lot of these girls they don't understand. And this is what happens to them. And they get involved in this. And then you are now this, I'm going to say young, 20 something year old. You have really no financial resources, right? You are, you may have a normal person, but now you're going to go after somebody like P. Diddy who has millions of dollars, this powerhouse mm, behind good them. Good point. And just, so it's very intimidating, nobody. right, Sharon? Extremely intimidating. Who, what, what are you going to do? Who are you to go to the cops and say, P. Diddy raped me? What, what evidence do you have? What powerhouse are you going to stand up to? Do you realize how intimidating that is to anyone to then go there and then say that to somebody? Oh my like, gosh. Thank you for saying that. I'm, I see there, it now. Therein lies the biggest problem when you go to stand up to a, a, a thing. That, and then, and then what happens? Somebody like the Andrew Tates of the world or something like that. She's doing it for money. All of society comes after you because all you are is a gold digging whore. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's all society digs you as. Because believe me, I know exactly what that feels like. Because guess what? My own family did it to me. So I know exactly how that feels. So I know exactly, and I'm nobody, and yet here I was, I was a 40-year-old, so I know exactly the feeling of a lot of these girls, and these girls are much younger. They have less than, and, and I'm highly educated, so I understand what these things go through. I know exactly what a lot of these women, I couldn't imagine if this happened to me when I was 20, and I did not have everything I have behind me, and I've built upon, so I was able to I guess, deal with therapy and the PTSD and continue to build myself. So I was able now to be able to discuss these kinds of things that I'm able to discuss and to be able to bring light to what are these other victims that they go through. And a lot of them mm -hmm. never, ever recover because it's one of the yeah. hardest things to recover from because how do you deal with being manipulated, coerced? And then like you go over your boundaries, your moral boundaries. How do you recover from that? Which is why a lot of someone like Beaver who you see struggling every single day, even though he has all of this talent, right? All of this money, all of this stuff that you see that looks to be positive, but he still has a hard time recovering from something that, because what happens is that you go past your moral boundaries that you never thought you would ever do. How do you recover from that? You know, it's your moral, it's like a fabric within you. And like, it pushed you past those things. So it's a really hard thing to try to recover from, but then, like, unless you have life experiences where you have recovered from the break of almost death, um, and then you built yourself back up, like I have had, like, you, once you have those experiences, then you're able then to somewhat build, rebuild yourself. And that's essentially what you have to do is rebuild yourself from scratch down. You know what? I, I, um, it, I started to understand the difference between my upbringing and your upbringing. And I, it, now that I, now that I listen, and I'm exposed to uh, women who grew up protected by their parents, who grew up um, shielded, and they grew up in a nice environment away from predators. The total opposite of the way I grew up, um, uh, like all of the stuff that, that uh, the reason why I, I have not been able to be exposed to, I mean, uh, tricked in any, any of this, is because the way I was raised in the ghetto, you know, saying, surrounded by predators it was just part of my environment and and i think and i don't mean any harm like this sharon but i was like wow did i have the better even though i had a terrible upbringing did i have the better upbringing that mm -hmm. i got this out of the way mm -hmm. as, and in, in my youth than yep. in my adult yep yeah because i was completely like it, like like protected like I can tell you that like fully hard wholeheartedly, 
I was never exposed. Like I wasn't even really allowed much out of the house without my brothers around. So like that should tell wow. you how protected, like I didn't realize until I was much, much older. And then now having to deal with everything I did when, you know, cause like I rebelled is the best way to put it. I mean, I was with my, my ex when I was 16. So like 16 okay. all the way up until my mid, like late forties, I'm well, mid forties essentially. So I was like 40 to whatever was when I left him. And then essentially what happened is was then I went to go essentially explore, right? Traveled, mm -hmm. right? And then I went on a consulting uh, thing and um, I used to consult and like go to different hotels and I'd stop and essentially I got drugged and raped by, by somebody um, who ran the hotel. And essentially that's what happened. But I didn't fully grasp the danger of what I was doing until way after the fact. Okay. Right. So yeah. it's like, you don't understand because like I was never taught that. Like I've always just jumped on a plane and just gone wherever I wanted to go. <laughs> like you don't understand that, sweetie, you're not supposed to do that. Like you realize you're a beautiful blonde woman. You're not supposed to just jump on an airplane and go to like Dubai on your own or Saudi Arabia or those places. Girl, you went to Dubai <laughs> on your own? Yes. What? <laughs> yes. So, because I've done it my entire life, like really I have. Now, I was like with family and I had brothers, I had this, and I had that, but all, for the past seven years of my career, all around the United States, that's what I did. I would go, wow. go to commercial properties and, you know, investigate it, da, 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 da. so I did it. So it never occurred to me like, <laughs> like, and these are the things that I can tell you a lot of women do. A lot of women just jump on an airplane, think they can just travel wherever they want to travel. Come to find out, yeah, no, you cannot. You really cannot. It's one thing to travel maybe to Europe or, you know, some of those places. But now I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going to a fucking Airbnb. Like, I'm just not going to do it. Like, I'll go to a hotel and I'll stay in an area. Well, yeah, because yeah. now it's been revealed that they're putting cameras in cameras. Airbnbs. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, no. So like, <laughs> better off in a hotel. <laughs> better off in a hotel. So, like, it's things like that that a lot of us, especially us naive girls who were raised with a very enforceful dad and brothers and stuff like that who lived very sheltered, right? I'm very young and naive girl. And I was raised that way and I will admit it. Um, who then got married off at a very young age, you know, and now is somewhat kind of learning her knocks of life mm -hmm. the hard way, right? So, you know, and then I, I have friends though, thank God, that have harder who then like no Sharon you have to learn it this way <laughs> right let's yeah, teach yeah, you yeah. come on <laughs> which is the good thing about sisterhood right they're like no yes let's do it this way so that's essentially a lot of things that we have to find with each other which is why I tell girls don't judge other women you don't know what their life has been like go talk to them yeah and so yeah. there you go yeah, good point. Good point. Um, Helly, did you raise your hand? Did you wanted to say I saw you raise your hand? Y'all, y'all don't have to raise your hand. You can just jump right on into the conversation. Oh yeah, I just want to throw out there. That's actually because uh, I know time wise we're getting short on time. It's a good, uh, it's a good potential topic to flow into is women's just awareness of predators and what this planet really is. I think my upbringing was probably somewhere in the middle. Um, it definitely was not, it was not that protected just because my parents were so busy and I had access to all kinds of things. And I knew that getting attention was actually life and death dangerous, life and death dangerous. Um, and especially when you're 12, uh, you know, and, and actually that's something I've seen a lot of comments about girls saying men, um, well, parents realize that men are approaching their kids, right. their girls, right. you know, and boys too, but they're girls. And that's a whole awakening for parents of like, my kid is 12 and she's eating cat call. Yeah, that's what the world is. And I've been at parks and I witnessed I, leaving toward the end of the day and I see girls going out to run in the dark. Now you could blame them for being stupid, but it's partly because they're so indoctrinated with princess fantasies. It's they've been actively indoctrinated that, oh, it's okay if you have a felon boyfriend, it's okay to leave your newborn with him. He would never hurt it. What? Girls are 
you know what I mean. Girls are indoctrinated <gasps> that, oh, you know, this guy would not harm you or anybody else. And we're indoctrinated for a reason. And that's so we participate, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. I think, um, I see, with me growing up um, in the hood, like, we, they were pimps, drug dealers. I've seen so many... Dead, my dead first dead body scene was uh, probably at the age of four. We seen uh, me and my best friend at the time saw a man overdose, and we thought he went to sleep. He just really overdosed on heroin with a with a needle in his arm. Um, I've seen all kind of things, and one thing about growing up as a girl, we are you learn through other little girls' mistakes what not to do, and then you have the other women in the in the ho her hood who will teach you stay away from that man don't they'll teach you what to look for so the reason why i'm so good at reading people is because i had to read people to survive not to get assaulted not to get raped not to be kidnapped as a little girl and it wasn't until i uh my father took custody of me at the age of 11 we moved to a um uh, middle class area and I was <clears throat> I was heartened by then so it was like a lot of the tricks that the guys were playing on the girls you know saying at, when I went from the ghetto to um, middle class it, it was kind of crazy to me like why did you fall for that but I at the time and I'll say I, I'll be transparent I still had that mentality until I began to talk to more women who grew up like you, Sharon, who grew up like Helly, who grew up a lot of a lot of uh women who grew up sheltered and the the lifestyle that I envied, you know, as a as a, a ghetto child, I was like, man, they live in the life. They get to have a car, they get to have, you know, their parents love each other, blah, blah, blah. I'm realizing that I was given gifts, all right, that protected me as an adult. But I also passed those on. Uh, to other women, especially self-defense, how to, you know, recognize a, a man who's up to no good, how when you go on a first date, stop telling all your damn business, you know, make a fictitious character and be very vague, you know, saying because what these men are doing is they're interviewing you to see what kind of character they need to play. And you're giving them the script by telling them everything you like, love and hate. Okay. And I'm so it's like, I'm passing on that knowledge that was given to me uh, as I grew up and also with a very misogynistic whore father, my father, I will say this, and you, some of you already know this. My father was a good father to me. He was just a bad man to women, including his wife, including my mom, his first wife, including my stepmom. He was just a, he was a womanizer. And that's how I learned the games that they, pl that men play by watching the games that my father played on women. And so I indirectly learn how not to be those women and teach that along. But I will say that I appreciate listening to other women's uh, stories because it gets me out of my little um, limited view of, hey, your life, all women don't know what you know, tree, because they didn't grow up the way you grew up. So you need to be more open minded and a little bit more understanding. And I have to admit, y'all know me, I'm a little alpha. I'm like, why the hell you do that? That's just dumb. You know, like be more understanding of, hey, everybody, you know, have a different uh, path that they took to get where they are today. Yeah, what you said there, Tree, that's how I feel when I see these girls literally starting their run in the dark. I'm like, okay, how do you not know that's a bad idea? But they do it all the time. And it's almost like in our society, people are so removed from reality completely because there's other aspects, you know, like making sure you turn your stove off, you know, stuff like that. There's people are kind of in a daydream and they're on the internets and whatever. Oh, by the way, I got to send a thousand hearts to Spooky Radfem. I never see her. I love her. She's hilarious. Love you. <laughs> yes. Can I continue? These predator men, they will always use Darvo. If you guys don't know what that is, you should learn about it. They will always try to turn it around on you to the point where you start to actually believe that you are doing something wrong. And your self-esteem basically crumbles, so you start accepting this kind of abuse and this poor behavior, and you think you deserve it. It could take literally years of therapy to undo all of this mental torture that they're inflicting on you. So I think we're starting to, to stop 
victim blaming women so hard and really stand together and be sisters because men will see this happen and they will always blame women will always be at fault we're you know we're whores or we're gold diggers we're this or that if we don't have a perfect reputation they will throw you under the bus immediately while men they always get a pass so we really need to stand together as women and um stick up for each other i think we're going to go through darvo and we're going to go through the different tactics that they use to educate more yes yeah i i never heard of darvo so maybe we'll talk about that uh next next, tuesday next tuesday yeah 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 Yeah. my thoughts go ahead listen uh you know tree that i've been like following your channel for about two years now right and i would hear you talk about your dad and what i picked up you know like i'm a quote-unquote survivor right is that you got the benefit of an inside look of how these women were willing to be treated by your dad and your dad being like don't be like that don't be like them so in that way like your narcissist get dad could have turned out so different with you but i think that since you got like an inside peek and for him to be like yeah that's not gonna happen to my girl or whatever really prepared you to set your own standards and to be able to say no very confidently by your dad helping you establish about knowing your worth, right? And knowing you are not going to allow people to treat you like garbage or less than you decide. Because like you say, right? You teach people how to treat you, right? So right. that's part of it, right? So in some ways, your dad was a benefit to you, right? Yes. So, I mean, like, I can appreciate that, right? But on the other hand, like, those women kind of should have known better, too, by being like, the snake's a snake, right? And you're choosing to re-engage this guy over and over again. So that's part of the responsibility. But also, I couldn't tell you at the time, right? Because I'm just like, you know, I'm just a viewer or whatever. Um, but it was like, I didn't want to get into the trauma bonding conversation with you. Um, you know what I mean? Like maybe that's why you couldn't understand what some of these, why some of these women, not all of them, that just kept going back to the abuser when it didn't make any freaking sense. It doesn't make but any sense also, to normal people, the, right? He's 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 been he's married. <laughs> I don't even know if it was the it was like my dad's married. My my dad has a wife. Why are you married when I have always been against mar uh women messing with married men? But I've also been more against married men. Let's be clear. If you want to know who I, if I was to say who I blame more, the married man or the woman trying to engage with a married man, of course I'm going to blame the man. He's married. He should know better. He should know how to say no. But see, these the women are just like, I'm saying like, this man is married. That in itself should have been like a, a red flag. What do you think? Well, that's part of it. That's part of what's what the trauma bonding is, right? It's getting these women to keep believing that I'm going to leave my wife. Leave me, yes, yes, true, true, right? Yeah, that's yeah, part yeah. of it, right? He and would then, tell them, "I'm gonna leave my wife. I'm gonna leave," but he right, never right. did. We never. We don't sleep in the same room. I sleep on the couch. She's a yeah. bitch. Whatever they come up with, okay. And then once they trauma bond you, then they're like, you know, I'm never going to leave my wife, right? <laughs> 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 but you are so stuck your heart's all stuck in it and you like invested so much time that a lot of ladies are like well maybe if i just debase myself a little bit more i'm like listen you've already reached the bottom of the dumpster honey <laughs> it's time to climb out and hose right. off like you know just accept the, the the l like you felt like you believed a married man in the same way that carmen Electra didn't believe her own eyes when she caught what's his face in bed with two women, right? Who are you gonna believe, right. baby? Me or your own two eyes? <laughs> <laughs> How do we as women help other women, you know, not fall? Stop I can... lying to yourself. That's the big one. Other people can lie to you all day. But if you take it in and you and you fool this part of what this take game is, okay? It's about them making it think it's your idea. Okay. They make it think it's your idea and then you blame yourself. Meanwhile, they've been manipulating you the whole time so that you do think it's your idea. And then when you look back, you're like, damn, I was a fucking, you no, know, I never would have thought about that on my own. I don't want to be with a married man. I don't want, I don't want to take a cheater because now I got a cheater who's going to cheat on me. <laughs> Ick. 
<laughs> right. Right. Oh, I wanted to say that I think it's pretty common, actually, for fathers to treat the daughters differently or better than the mothers. I feel like a lot of fathers, they want better for their daughters. They just aren't capable of doing that with the women that they directly sleep with. And then also this this case, the Diddy case, is going to have a lot of really beautiful women involved. And um, the and people, it's inevitable. They'll say, well, you know, they attended the parties or whatever. Well, the French case puts a really great light on the fact that it doesn't matter where you are or, uh, you know, what you're wearing. The French lady was, what, in her 70s or late 60s when uh, almost 100 men um, sexually assaulted yes! her. Yes! And she was in her bed. She was literally in her own bed, in her home, unconscious, wearing whatever she wears to bed, which in your late 60s, what is she wearing to bed? So that French case is really good to dispel like, oh, these beautiful women, you know, they were asking for it. They were dressed for it. No, it really doesn't matter. You can literally be at home in your own bed. In reference to that case, like, how long was she married to this guy? Like, long time, right? 50 years? Like, yeah, so long. long. Yeah. The assaults went back at least 10 years, right? Yeah, like they gone on. It, oh, no, he blamed her because she refused to do um, go to brothels and, and, and different things like that. So he actually, like, I read the, from the psychiatrist of, of, like, his reasoning behind this. And he blames her because she refused to go to, you know, sex parties and this and that. So then he would drug her while in her meal. Right. And then invite these men over to essentially rape her while she was passed out, which, you know, triggered my own, you know, essay. So, like, this was like, and I'm like, you have, like, you talk about the ultimate betrayal and trust. Like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, this is the man you've spent the past 50 years of your life with who essentially drugged your meal and, Invited these strange men. I think now she has AIDS or HIV. She's HIV positive and, and all these other issues. And I'm like, you have, and the only way they found out is because he was filming up a girl's skirt in a supermarket. And then when the police came in, they found all these other videotapes and then come to find out that's how they found it. It, it, and she does have lapses of memory, right? But like, she just put it off to other things. Like you never, you know, put two and two together. And I'm just like, you have freaking got to be kidding me. So like, Jesus, it it, it is. It's just more proof that a man can marry. Like not all. We have to keep saying that, right? Are you guys? You know how sensitive they get. Like, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. All men, especially those little men. Little men. No, but I mean, like, there's no better example than a man can marry you and spend his whole life with you and still fucking hate you. Like, yeah. uh, I cannot, like, I wouldn't do that to somebody I hated because <laughs> I couldn't stand to be in the same room with people I hate. But, I mean, being married to somebody and, like, not just, listen, sometimes you want someone to shut the fuck up and maybe you want to drug their dinner so they don't talk to you. But inviting strangers yeah. over to assault them is a whole other level. That's a whole other level of, like, I, I don't even know how do you even describe that. Like, how do you describe that kind of vindictiveness and viciousness from somebody like I don't even he didn't know see her as a person she's property no yeah rad fam sometimes right when you go just don't get married it's not worth and i totally see where you're going and i go <laughs> <laughs> i do i do i do and when stuff like this happens i go well that's one point for her team yes <laughs> yes girl yes sadly <laughs> A lot of men really think that once you get married, that means they have consent to do whatever to your body. Right. And they they push the boundaries sexually and they keep pushing. Challenge them. accepted, fellas. Yeah. yeah, see, this is this is the thing about like, that's why because as an alpha woman, right? You know, saying this is just something I, I could never let. But I've also I I I think with my sixth sense my intuition and also my intelligence of knowing how to pick men, you know, so I can actually say that I, and I'm, and this is a blessing. This is a thankful thing, a position of men that I have never picked a man that would 
do something like me like that, put his hands on me, assault me, smash my face in the cake, any of that stuff that they do. I, I look at it and I go, I can't relate to this. I can't relate to any of this because I've never attracted a man like this, but I'm not most women. I'm, I'm very aggressive. I'm very, I even brag about being in my masculinity, which men hate. Right. And that's because that if I if I if I'm embracing my masculine self because you don't deserve my my feminine self, that puts me in a weak position. And that's what I want women to understand when you are in your femininity, you know, what I'm saying you are in your motherly, your guide, your sisterly, you are in a uh uh, a position that makes you a little bit of vulnerable to masculine men, men who are predators. Mm -hmm. But when I am in my masculinity, I am not an easy target. I'm a hard target now because now I am going to give you the same type of energy back to you that you are, you know, going to use to try to subjugate me or to take over me. Yes. And they hate that. And it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. As spooky, wouldn't you love to see them try to shove Tree's face in a cake? I would love. Oh my to god! Please! Oh my god! <laughs> They're not even tall enough to reach your shoulder. Most of them, you know. I seem try though. It'd be funny, dude. That, I'd be going to jail because you know the knife that you use to cut that cake, dude. It'd be coming out of his chest. I can't. I we would know. I'd be like, "Come on, take me to jail. I'm going by." I I, I turn myself in. I just I. I like this, uh, the stereotype about how people are like, well, black women are masculine and we're, yeah, th and that's why you don't never see that stuff done to us at our wedding. You know what I'm saying? I own that. I'm like, I'm not going to allow a man doing that to me. The, how, the listen, thing about, how much you paying if I find a video footage of a, a black woman getting her face smashed? She can't be biracial. Okay. <laughs> she got to be 100%, 75 or more. Black like, what's, daddy what's and a quota? black mama. Okay. <laughs> that, that video is not going to exist. And if it okay. does, <laughs> that man has just gotten his ass whipped. Yes. There's, there's no way. There's no way. I can tell you, there's no way an African American woman would ever mm -mm. allow a man to smash her no. face into a cake. There is no I way. looked. I looked off. I looked all over TikTok. I looked all over Twitter. I even went on YouTube. I did not see any. I saw mm -hmm. one very, 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 very light skinned woman. She looked a little bit his, uh, Latino. All right. And and that wasn't even done with cake. That was done with champagne. The the husband, the new husband, pour champagne on top of her head. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Nope. Mm -mm. So <laughs> mm -mm. Well, on the on the political right, we have this cri basically probably what's a testosterone crisis, right? It's a testosterone crisis, but the way it manifests is a bunch of guys yelling at women to submit, and they can't get us to submit. And it's uh -uh. funny because, you know, I'm petite. I can barely open jars. If you don't feel masculine around me, honestly, I cannot Good help point. you. Yes. I cannot help you. Yeah. And in and, and, and my opinion, submission, uh, not submission, uh, femininity you know, being around a man, like, and I consider that a gift, right? Because I feel safe that you're not going to take advantage of the situation. It's just like when certain animals uh, are about to go into labor, they're about to give birth to their, 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 their cubs, cute, whatever children or their offspring, they go somewhere secluded where they feel safe. They can't even do it in front of the the, the, the male counterpart that got them that way because they're afraid that they're going to eat their babies. So it's like, this is what I'm talking about. When you're in your vulnerable uh, state, if I don't feel safe around you, I'm never going to be in my femininity. I'm going to always be in my masculinity. That's fair. And it's going to take them a long time to figure that out. Okay. So this was a great discussion. Looked like this was the only discussion because I had three, but um, I guess I, I want to wrap it up uh, with everybody and I want to have everybody uh, say your conclusion and then anything you want to add. When I look at this story, I'm always thinking to myself and I'm always asking myself, how can I help women avoid this? I'm, I'm slowly coming up with some of the answers because I'm doing some of them now. Um, that is, I'm targeting young girls. I'm teaching them the game that I indirectly saw from my own father, telling them what to do, what to say, you know, what to look out for. Stop volunteering information. Stop posting them everything you're doing on Instagram, on TikTok, you know, 
keep certain stuff close to the chest. Uh, we're in a generation, generation alpha, generation uh, Z, where they are oversharing, and that's dangerous. Okay. And so I think that uh, that's one of the ways I'm helping, but also to give examples of women who made mistakes and then teaching other women, this is what she did. Let's learn from her mistake. Let's not shame her. Although that has happened when the cake thing, I told you, whoo, child, but I'm, I'm learning to be a little bit more understanding and patience and stuff like that. But, um, uh, we'll sh- I'll show different uh, situations that women are in and I'll go, what did she do wrong? Let's look at her body language. Let's look at his body language. So I believe in teaching. I guess what I want to go around and we'll start with thoughts is how can we help? We can't help all women. That's just not possible. How can we help other women avoid being victims uh, of the Tates, of Diddy, of Epstein of a lot of people uh, that want to be predators. The easiest thing is when uh, actions don't match the words. So if a man is like, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I love you. I'm going to leave my wife. I'm going to give you this, that, and the other. Be like, all right, then show me, show me. And then I'll believe you. No problem. Right. It's because they can't produce after the promises. Right. So when Mm -hmm. actions don't match words, that doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. If actions don't match their words, you can walk away from that person. That's number one. And that's that's the first key indicator. Also, yeah, you got to teach people how to treat you. So watch for people trying to like negotiate your boundaries. Don't let anyone negotiate your boundaries. Don't capitulate. Don't compromise for somebody that won't invest in you. Right. Um, it's just general good advice. It's not necessarily about dating. It's knowing your circle. Right. Because even. Uh, you could meet somebody through a friend of yours and that friend could have no idea what they're like and they vouch um, because they've never been like dating them or whatever. But it's like, does this person's actions match their words though, right? When they mm-hmm. when they call you like fam or bro or whatever, that kind of uh, bonding language, do they act like it? And if oh, they don't- Oh, nice. I right? like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Words, like word people can say whatever they want, right? That's why when people say like dead mom jokes and stuff, I'm like, yeah, LOL. But do your actions match your words, bro? Like that, I don't give a shit about anything you say. <laughs> right, right. I agree with the, you know, because people talk a great game, but, you know, eventually there's lack of action behind it. And then on top of it, it's um, teaching people, one, about love bombing and how quickly that happens and how quickly it goes away. And um, also know how to particularly ask and know how to play that game and how quickly you can, you know, turn it around on people and how to ask those questions um, and how to probe them while they're trying to love bomb you is another way to do it. Um, And that's just something that just comes with experience, unfortunately, but also you can teach it. And then from there, it's... um, Besides just is there action behind behind what they're saying? I think that's what the number what all of us have to learn to like we all love a great game or way they're talking to you or make you feel, right? It's you have to get out of yourself out of the way and make you feel versus okay, what are they actually doing? Like, okay, that's great that they want to take you on a nice vacation or they want to take you to Molly or they want to take you here, but did they actually plan that date for you on Saturday and show up on time? Like there's the question or, okay, are they actually calling you at nine o'clock at night um, when they say they're going to, or is that because they don't call you at nine o'clock at night because their wife is home? So like, here's the questions that you really need to ask. That's a really good one, actually. <laughs> exactly. Like, when are they actually calling you? When are they having conversations with you? Do they only call you when they're in the office or here? Or are they actually calling you, you know, morning, noon, and night? Or like, like you really need to pay attention to like, when are they actually having conversations with you? When are they talking to you? When are things happening? Are they planning dates with you? Do they actually show up on the dates? Do they do this? Like, are the actions behind the words that they're saying. So those are the things that a lot of people need to, because especially online, right? Online, we can we can host a great freaking game, right? Just like we can edit the photos, we can make you look absolutely freaking amazing. But at the same time, it's completely different in real life when things actually happen in real life. Okay. So those are the things that I, I would definitely, you know, guide women 
and girls on uh, versus online versus real life. All right, Radfam. My first thing would be to decenter men and romantic love and start thinking practically in your life about what benefits you as a woman, like men always do, and stop being so self-sacrificing. Um, stop putting men on a pedestal in general and their time and attention. It isn't actually valuable. It could actually put you in danger. Um, and really listening to other women, sharing their stories is very helpful. Um, learning their tactics, that's a really, really important one. And building our own self-worth. Yeah, I love all those ideas. And I think Sharon mentioned the trips that they're going to take you. I would say financial independence is huge because do you need the money or do you need a man? Uh, a lot of women would not put up with a lot if they had the money and the resources to leave. So I like the idea of being a good example, being okay, being single and just like living that out so that girls can see there's an alternative way to do it. You can actually take a lot of responsibility for your life and build a great one these days without having to be someone's servant or having to beg them for crumbs. I, I, I want to piggyback on top of that. I too want women to stop thinking that they are nothing or no one if they are not married. Listen, please. And I'm saying this as a married woman. Okay. All right. I am who I am, whether I'm married or not. Okay? I don't use my status, my marital status, as validation for my existence or I'm better than anyone. I, truth be told, like I told you all, in the end, my sisterhood and I have a golden girl retirement plan. All right. So I know what's going on. The thing about it is, is that I don't like women being shamed for not getting married, not having kids and being single. You it, it, you cannot be in a happy relationship with someone else if you're not in a relationship, in a happy, if you're not happy with yourself. And a lot of, we understand most men don't like being alone, but women don't tend to appreciate their solitude and they don't tend to appreciate being and taking advantage of being single. Man, I loved it. In my entire 20s, I had, Marriage was never on the table. You could, nobody could never convince me of that. And so I want you all to think about this. You do not, do not look at if you're not married, then your life is not complete. Trust me, you, your life is complete whether you have a ring on your finger or not. Thoughts, I'm sorry, you wanted to say something? Me? No, no. I didn't have hey, you got your hand up. up. I don't. <laughs> I don't have no, my hand you up. You know what? <laughs> I'm looking on my computer and it shows your hand up on my computer. My bad. Okay. So <laughs> I need to look at my phone. Ah, oh, okay. There it's gone. Now. now she's just gaslighting you there for a minute. That's right. Okay, so it was up. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't up on my side. I thought I would put it up and take it down. Maybe I was like, you, I was right? like, wait a minute. Is it, is it? Cause I'm looking on my computer instead of my phone. And I'm like, your hand is up on, on the computer. All right. Anyway, Yo, this was great. Um, uh, we're going to definitely have again. Don't forget, we're still going to have a continuation of our conversation of whores make the best wives because I did do some research in reference to men not wanting sex in their marriage. <laughs> I don't want to share that. So we're still going to uh, talk about that. And then also, uh, what did you call it again, Radfam? D-V-O or? Darvo. Let me write this. Darvo? Darvo. Yes, Darvo. I want to talk about that and other techniques that we need to to use to to, to discuss to help other women um, uh, understand these these tricks that are being played on them, especially when they're young. And 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 we understand there's no age when a predator is going to come for you, as mm -hmm. we can see with the with the with the elder in in it. Well, what was it? France, France, France. In, in France. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter the age. It just you're, It's just the fact that you are a woman and how these men feel like they're going to get one over on you by doing something so evil and cruel mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming by. This recorded space will be available to be re-listened. I will have this up, this particular, uh, I will have the um, PG version of this uploaded to YouTube. And, uh, but you all can uh, feel free to listen. One of these days we may take in, because I, I, I saw that the Lady Luck 
uh, wanted to request to come in, but we'll probably one of these days we'll accept. Uh, maybe we'll see. Maybe next Tuesday. I don't know. We'll see. We're playing it by ear because this is our fourth episode and still going strong. So uh, we may take some questions as well as some female guests uh, that want to join in on the discussion. So, you know, we'll play it by ear and see how things go. So once again, thank you all for coming by. Remember, we do this every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, anywhere from one hour, no more than an hour and a half. So thank you. I want to thank all the ladies who were here on the panel. And I want to thank all of you all who are listening. And I'll see you uh, next Tuesday. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.